it says that she had a golden cup in her hand, and that's, again, the golden cup of the Eucharist, and that she is full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So think about all of the, you know, the Catholic priests and their illicit relations with little boys. I mean, you know, you tell a priest that he has to remain single all the days of his life and be celibate and then put them around a bunch of little children. I mean, you're just setting that up for failure. That's breeding, breeding grounds for pedophilia. And the Protestant spinoffs are guilty of it too. So, you know, beware of youth groups. You know, I, I do send my, my daughters to, to youth groups because we're a small church here. Uh, but I don't just like drop them off blindly and just walk away. Like I'm there. I know the people there. I know who they are. Um, and, and we, you know, we know who's leading them there. And so, you know, make sure if you're going to drop your kids off at youth groups, make sure that they're safe and make sure that you know who's there and who's teaching them, not only, you know, physically, but also the doctrine being taught. So, you know, don't just drop them off. The Bible says that a bishop must be married in order to be a pastor or a bishop. So 1 Timothy 3 gives us the qualifications of a bishop. 1 Timothy 3, if you read that whole chapter, it goes over bishops and deacons. But 1 Timothy 3, 2 says, A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. So it, the Bible commands that its bishops be married. You can't be a bishop if you're not married. If you're single, you can be an evangelist, but you can't be a pastor. You can't be a bishop. And so, you know, notice also it says the husband of one wife. It doesn't say the wife of one husband, right? But the husband of one wife. So obviously women pastors are completely unscriptural, right? You can, again, women are commanded to evangelize, to preach the gospel. Uh, you had women, you know, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, and uh, you had people there that were you know, at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, were the first to proclaim the gospel. And Jesus had a great role for women, and he uplifted women. The Bible actually uplifts women quite frequently. We've got Ruth and Esther and Deborah and all these. But one thing they can't do, there's even you know, women prophets in the New Testament, but one thing they're not commanded to do is to pastor a church and to be a shepherd of a church. You know, that is reserved for, you know, we're patriarchy. You know, I don't care if that's not popular today. The Bible is a patriarchal book. And so, you know, I stand by that. And so a bishop or a pastor must be married and cannot be divorced. You know, it doesn't mean the husband of one wife at a time. It says the husband of one wife, right? So God forbid if I were to ever to divorce, I would immediately step down. It wouldn't even be a question like, you know, Greg Locke or others who continue to pastor and to preach, even though I like his KJV onlyism, I like his, you know, his stance against abortion. And he's a fiery preacher, right? I mean, he, I've, I'm like, yeah, this is some good preaching, but he's disqualified uh, because he's been divorced. The Roman Catholics teach just the opposite. They teach that their bishops can't get married and must remain celibate in contradiction to 1 Timothy 2.